Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or any time you are coming across this platform, Linda TV Show. If it is your first time and you like what we are doing here, after watching this video, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notification. In that way, you will be able to know when we upload a new video. I want to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform which we are using to disseminate information to the members of the public. At the same time, I want to put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, I do not promote violence, I do not promote hate speech, I do not promote misleading information. Myself, I don't like it. We react to all forms of videos. So, I also want to remind YouTube that a call for self-determination is never a call for war. Yesterday, I read something from the Sahara's uh, reporters. According to them, a UN report, which says that Nigeria joins Somalia. Nigeria joins Somalia. Others on list of hunger hotspots, likely to be soon hit by acute food you know, insecurity. That means Nigeria now is on the level of Somalia and other countries that are on the list of hunger hotspots that are suffering from acute food insecurity. And instantaneously, what came to my mind was a statement that was made by our great leader, Mazi Nandikano, where he said, you know, publicly and clearly, that if you don't permit or allow their friends to go, that the zoological republic you call Nigeria will be a worse place on the surface of this earth than Somalia. And he said that time that in case you've not gotten your Somalia visa, your visa, you should expedite actions to try and obtain it because Somalia is going to be heaven if you compare it to what is about to befall Nigeria. Today, I want to ask any one of you who has cerebrum or brain in that cerebral cavity you call skull or your head, whether Nigeria is not facing it now today, the acute food insecurity. Now, when you go to the market on a daily basis, the prices of basic commodities, you know, are skyrocketing, you know, on a daily basis, attempting to kiss the sky. And as I see what is playing out today, and I'm telling you, let me tell you this, the revolution that is about to start in that zoo will begin from the markets, will begin from the markets. What we are telling all of you, do the right thing, understand? Stand on what is right, understand? All of you felt we were this and that. Today, it is not going to be a matter of whether you're Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba, or Fulani, or Ophi, or whatsoever. We are all in need together. And it is a fact that what is happening today is touching every single human being. Whether you believe in God, don't believe in God, or whatever, nobody cares about it. And if you take a look, something you know amazing also shook me yesterday, and I was laughing. And that was the argument at the floor of the National Assembly, whether cows are citizens of the country or whether cows are not supposed to be citizens of the country. In this 21st century, you are still arguing idiotically, you see, about cows, ruga or no ruga everywhere. If you think you have four heads, understand. And somebody was saying that every state should be, must be prepared to have a ranch. That person is mad. You are stupid. Very stupid. In fact, you are very silly. Every state, ranch or ranches will never be in every state. I think the governor of Kanu State, Ganduji, said it. That he has an enough land or more than enough, enough land for all the pastoralists or all the cattle herders or whatever to bring their cows to the state. All of you must go there. If you have animals, then create a space for them to be. You cannot take your animal everywhere to cause problems for everybody everywhere. So the issue of ranches or ranch, zero that in your mind. We will never allow that to happen in our, you know, in our land. 
You see, at this time, you see, what really shocked me most during that argument was the argument of a woman there who stood up. At least somebody will say, you know, she's religious or she's a Muslim. And she made a very nasty and very silly statement there, very foolish statement, that even the Fulanese consider the life of their cows or consider their cows worth than their own life. Can you just imagine that kind of stupid talk? That the Fulanese value their cows than their own life. And then I looked at this woman and I was shocked. So the life of an animal is important than the life of a human being. Then why did God create a human being? Is it not for human beings to be in charge of all things? Is it not for human beings to have dominion or no to have dominion over all things? Then I was very shocked. That is somebody imagine, imagine the stupidity. You will say she's educated, educated, but very foolish. Education or knowledge is never wisdom. They are all different things entirely. Looking at that, won't you call an educated person or an educated person? But imagine the nonsense, the thoughtlessness, the foolishness that oozed from uh, you know, head that the fool and values, you know, the, the life of you know his animals than even his own life. I've never seen that kind of stability in my life. You see, in fact, that is an arrant sheer the sheerest insult to humanity. I was very ashamed. That is the kind of low level uh, people of IQ you bring into your senate, you see, to represent a people. In fact, if it were to come from my, my, my senatorial district, that very moment will bring her down. We will recall and say, please, you are never going to represent SDA again. That tells you who they are, they are standing. Just imagine. You see, the point I want to make here is that Nigeria has reached the Somalia level now and it's going to be worse than Somalia. Remember in one of my videos I said it, I think a few days ago that Nigeria is already very close to the time of Samaria where parents were taking turns to slaughter their children to eat just for them to survive. You see, it happened and it's getting towards our time. Truth be told that Nigeria is on the path of total destruction or annihilation and there's nothing any man can do about it, or there's nothing any man can do to reverse the impending calamity that is about to befall that place you call Nigeria. Zoo, that zoo. And the revolu revolution, as I see, is going to begin from the markets, where the prices of basic communities are skyrocketing every day and nothing is done, being done about it. That's the fact about it. You see, for all of you, who are supporting one Nigeria, blah, 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 or trying to like hold brief or take sides, you know, with Nigeria one way or the other, trying to romance, to romance Nigeria. You see, I'm always say, saying it bluntly. My views about Nigeria, you know, are non-romantic. If you like, go and hold the transformer. If you like, leave. It is your own business. Seven police officers were killed just a few days ago in Zanfara State. Not a few is talking about it. You're all championing that one that happened in the East and talking all kinds of nonsense. Seven police officers were killed in far away Zamfara State. I said none of you talking about it. It's not trending, it's not really an issue. It's like it's normal. Anyway, that is the issue we're talking about here. That's a big problem. You see, all of you writing rubbish in what a punch, van all this nonsense you write there supporting this government. In fact, I want to tell you Yorubas, those Yoruba media, they, that's the worst thing anybody can associate with is associated with Yoruba media. Understand? You can write nonsense, support the Tinubu government, every damn thing. I think you are seeing everything happening in the country. You can support it, take sides. But I'm telling you that all of you that are supporting the Fulanese, you see, metaphorically or ironically or however, your lives are going to be worse than the lives of the houses in their own land. Take it or leave it. If you want to know how your lives would be like, look at the houses today in their own land. You see, that is how your own life is going to be. Although the houses now waking up, they are rising and they say, no, a fool is a fool and a house man is a house man. 
they are trying to distinguish and then stake their true identity. That's the fact about it. I am telling you what look at where look at the whole thing today. Look at the whole thing today. Whether you like it or not, Nigeria is on the path of total destruction. And Nigeria will be destroyed beyond any human comprehension. Very soon we are going to say there was a country, according to the title of the last book of the great and immortal sage, Chinua Achebe. That is the level we have found ourselves today in. Every day things are getting tougher, harder and harder. You still have seven more years to go. This, that was just year one just passed. Seven more years are waiting you to feel the heat of your nonsensicalities. Good morning, Paul. Uh, a lot of people are, are also trying to uh, get to you and hear from you, uh, being the fact that you come from Plateau Middle Belt, and uh, we experienced, uh, from your experience, the last interview you granted, people are asking for your number, people are asking for your contact, people want to get uh, uh, to you, you know, on this platform, on, on Today Media. Please subscribe and, and share and comment uh, on this issue. We are going to have a beautiful moment today. Uh, uh, can you tell us, Paul, uh, at this point, that uh, what does Biafra mean to Middle Belt now? Thank you very much, the good people of Nigeria. I always tell people that for, for the benefit of the Fulanese, for the, most especially for the Fulanese, if they knew that it's going to be for the Fulanese, they will never fought that war. Gawang regretted to fight that fight. They used Gawang. After he has fought that war, they have to, they have to, they have to take him out of the power. And you know, we the people of the Middle Belt, we have suffered under the regime of Muhammadu Buhari. The Middle Belt, we have seen what Buhari has done to us. Appointment has not been granted to the people from the Middle Belt, and the Middle Belt suffer insecurity. Buhari, under Buhari regime, he did not care to protect the life of the people in the Middle Belt. So for me, Biafra, I think, is a good thing. I never heard about the people of Biafra killing people, uh, kidnapping people. I never heard about the people of Biafra doing evil. But I know that Fulani are doing evil, and I know that some of the Hausa join them to do that evil. But I believe that there are some Hausa people that are good. They want a good life. Because even the Hausa, as, you, as I'm talking, they have been depressed. The Fulani depressed them. But now their eyes is opening. They began to understand that the Fulani are the one controlling the major resources of this country, which is not supposed to be done. Which is not supposed to be done. These resources of this country should be controlled by the people of Nigeria. But since Nigeria is not working, let Biafara take place and let the Nigerian government release Enam Dikanu. Enam Dikanu is not a terrorist. Enam Dikanu, we know, is a person who is standing for righteousness and justice, mm. and which we want in this country. Because the leaders of this country, as I talk to you right now, there is nothing like righteousness in them. They only deceive the media. They will just come to the media, they will talk that they have built this, they have built that, but we have seen nothing. Nothing has been built. Our life is always going backward instead of going forward. We don't have anything like Nigerian dream. There is no any dream in this land. The only dream we have is the children of the elite, the children of the politician. They are the only one that are enjoying life. And with some people that like they will just give them small, shitty money. And those people, their eyes, they, they, they are blind to see. They continue to support the evil, the evil government. So I don't think this country is working as I speak to you. Biafara for me, it's a good movement. And even majority part of the majority part of the middle belt would like to be part of the Biafara because they believe that Biafara are people who are not harming people they are people who want to see that this country will work and that is exactly what the people of middle belt want we want this country to work i know there are some some politicians in the middle belt because they are part of the corruption they will not like this movement we are not with the politicians they are for themselves, we are for ourselves, and we are supporting the Biafara, and we will stand for Biafara, and we will do whatsoever it is. That is why I'm calling all the Igbo and all the good people around the world, from Europe, Asia, all around the world, support this movement called Biafara. Let this Biafara stand, because Nigeria is not working. Nigeria is not working. They have already twisted this country in a way that life is not going to be good for us so it is better for a movement like the Biafran to come up and i would like if 
even if the, the, the Ibov would adopt me to be part of them, for me, I think it's okay. It is better for them to adopt me to be part of them. And with major, major, and um, with the majority from the middle bed, they would like to be part. We would like to be together. So are you saying that uh, the, the, the middle bed, uh, in case it will not want to be part of uh, our Safulani uh, country, that the middle bed are looking forward to join uh, Simon Epa and Namdekano if Biafra comes? I'm telling you, middle God, middle bed will love to join Samuel Epa. They will love that more than being with House of Alani. We know what the House of Alani did to us in Plateau State and in Benway. And even in Kaduna, you go to Nasarawa, some of those states, we know what they have done to us. How they came to, even people used to think that Kaduna belongs to Fulani. No, Kaduna is not for Fulani. They just came, they, they conquer, they take the Amia, they put out their Amia. If you go to Kaduna, you will see the true children of Kaduna. They just come and they take over the land. And that is exactly what they want to do in Benue. They want to do that in Taraba. They want to do that in Plateau State. So why will we? Why are we going to join ourselves with people that want to kill us? We rather join ourselves with people that want to us to survive, that want us to live a good life, that wants us to live a freedom life. It is better you live with a person that will love to see you doing good than to live with a person that day by day is haunting your life. And the people of the Far North, some of the, even though it's not all of them that are evil, but most of their leaders, they don't want to hear this. We need to talk about this. They are leaders. They are, the, they, are, they are the problem we are having in the North. Leaders of the North. They are the problem we are having. If Nigeria will become great today, then they need to restructure, which they don't want to restructure. They need to. They need to give their children good life. If you see the North, poverty is ravaging the North. The North is crying. A, 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 a majority in the North are suffering. So you can see that the problem is from the leader of the North. So, uh, uh, in the northern part of the country, and uh, if it happens to uh, Nigeria break today, and uh, uh, we still know that uh, there are Biafrans in the north uh, currently sure, now, sure. uh, Ibos in the north, we yes. call them Biafrans in the north. Yes. You know, um, what uh, will happen to uh, northern Nigeria if uh, uh, Biafra uh, uh, not, not succeed from Nigeria? Uh, are you looking, because if you both leave the north, how would the north look like? Thank you very much, thank you very much. If Biafra happened to take place, there the citizens of the north will understand that the northern leaders are the problem. They are the one that caused a problem to them in this country. They are the one that refused them to have a social life. Because as you can see, in the north, there is nothing like social life. Even some Bia Paolo, you will see, like in Kano, you will hear that during Ganduje uh, regime, he has to, he has to uh, lock some Bia Paolo, and not only lock, but they have to destroy the beer, destroy everything. So you can see social life, which people are supposed to have it, they don't want people to have a social life. So the are you only... saying the social life they are having now uh, is Bia France that is giving the North uh, some level of exposure and social life? The people without Bia France in the North, no social life in the North. Yes, yeah, social life. There are some good people. There are some good people too in the north. And there are some, the, 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 we all know that the Igbo people are social people. In fact, any, any state that you go and you don't see an Igbo person, then you should know that that state is not a place to be. Because everywhere you go, you see Igbo people. And Igbo life, the Igbo people, they always come with social things. They come with business. They come with things that will move, move the states. That is what they do. But if you see the leaders in the north, they are not encouraging most of those things because even money for the people to have those things instead of elevating the life of the people so that they can have that social life they will not do that they rather embezzle the money take it to america keep it in america which by the grace of god if throne come he will do a miracle that he will send their money back to africa and uh, and he will really do something that they don't know what it's going to be only if Trump come, I believe that that will happen because Biden for me is not a person who will look, who, who will look to the well-being of people. Because as I speak now, Biden for me is a corrupt president, and I would love Trump to come back. If he comes back, I believe America will be greater because America now is a third-class citizen. It's not a norm, It's no longer a first-class citizen. America is a third-class. Biden has already collapsed the system, and if they leave him, he will cripple everything. Thank you. Um, I, um, in, in, in Nigeria uh, uh, and uh, uh, in Lagos State, you know, 
um, the, we have seen uh, people saying um, that uh, Igbos, uh, if they release the name they you know, uh, the North will declare their own caliphate, and uh, uh, Nigeria, uh, they are threatening uh, Tinubu that they should not release Namdekano and uh, people all over the world are saying Tudubu must release Namdekano. Why is Nigeria afraid of releasing Namdekano? The people that are afraid to release Namdekano, they understand that this movement is going to really change the life of many people. In fact, it's going to open the eyes of the Nigerian because it's a man that I believe. He wants people to see prospects. But you see, those people that they don't want him to release that they want to have their own caliphate. I'm telling you, even if they have their own caliphate, they are a problem to themselves. That is what I want you to know. The Northern are a problem to themselves. They are the problem of this country. If you, ask, if you ask me who is the problem, who brought problem in this country, the Northern I have to forgive me. I have to say it because I might too am from the North. They are the problem of this country. They do not want anything good for this country. The only thing that they want for this country is kidnapping to get ransom. And kidnapping, a man that kidnapped is supposed to be killed. So you can see that those leaders that are kidnapping, they are supposed to be killed. If we are to go to, to the book of, to the, to the law of God, to the law of Moses, those people are supposed to, to be killed. But because Jesus Christ came and he has already softened the law, he has bring a new commandment. So they are not supposed to be killed, they are supposed to be jailed. So you can see that they are just walking around up and down, continue to co co continue to do the, 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 the continue to harm the life of many innocent Nigeria, and and nobody is saying anything, nobody is doing anything because they believe God is not seeing them. They believe nobody can do anything to them. But one thing I always tell them that everything you are doing, there is a repercussion for it. If you do good, there is a repercussion for it. If you do bad, there is a repercussion for it. You wish it will surely come back to you. So whether they like it or not, the bad thing they are doing, the evil they are doing is coming back and it will harm them, whether they like it yes. or not. Yes, how do you, the middle bed see Namdekano, Biafra? I'm talking about uh, Gawon and Dajuma who fought against Biafra now. How do they see the middle bed? Uh, would they uh, switch uh, uh, allegiance, um, possibly, uh, if uh, Biafra comes? Well, uh, it looks like they are beginning to have a kind of regret because the middle bed are being killed. You see, if you meet those two people, then Juma, and if you meet uh, Gawang, I'm telling you they would rather be with the Biafrans than to be with the people that will continue to kill their people. I'm telling you this, if they should speak, if they should be in the media, and if they should bring out a word from their heart, because there is no man would like to see his people being killed. No man would like to see his people being killed. And that is exactly what they are doing in Taraba, in Plateau State, in, 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 in the middle. But even the far north, they do not leave their self, you can see. And sometimes, what is going on sometimes is because, like the one that is happening in some part of Nigeria, uh, because some of, the, for some of the houses are Christians, then they don't want those people to even have the small, the small enjoyment that they are having there. They have depressed the Christian, the house are Christian. They have depressed their life. They don't have a voice to speak as I'm talking to you. But I believe that that evil that they have so is coming back to haunt them and good thing will surely come to this country. Whether Nigeria splits or Nigeria did not split, one thing I want you to know, that good people will come and they will rule this country and people will see a dividend of democracy. Thank you. Well, on one more note, you mentioned Donald Trump. Uh, do you think that Donald Trump uh, he will support uh, Biafra? Uh, from the way you are talking, he has so much love for Donald Trump. Does he have any connection with liberation of the Middle Belt and, of course, Biafra in your mind? Uh, on my own understanding, Donald Trump, which I believe is a man, is a straightforward person. He's not a politician. He's not a person who will promise you heaven on earth. We have seen, even though I'm not in America, but but I have seen what he has done to America. How he came, he gave people, he cut the tax. He cut the tax in America, and he have given people, uh, uh, he has given people work more than the uh, more than uh, what did they call him? Uh, Obama, more than uh, Clinton, more than those people. So Donald Trump is a person when he speaks. Even when they talk that they will move the embassy of of, uh, of of Israel to Jerusalem, they have talked. Obama talked. 
uh, George Bush talk, they could not do anything. But when Trump came on board, he had to move it and nobody can set a word. So Donald Trump will support every movement that is good. I believe he will support movement that is good. He's not going to be like Joe Biden. Joe Biden is supporting the evil that is going on even in Nigeria. So Joe Biden, if Joe Biden come back, then the evil will continue. But by the grace of God, he's not going to come back. He's not going to come back. How, how would you describe Igbo, Biafra in Nigeria? How would you describe that trace? How do you describe Igbo, Biafra in Nigeria? How would you look? How would you look at them? Who are they? If you look at the, 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 the Biafrans, these are people who believe that they need to have their independence. They need to have their own their their their, their own country of their own. And which is not bad, is good. Because we have seen people that fought to get their independence, like the former president of, of this African country, of, of this African country, uh, South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Yes, he fought and he won. So also, I know it's not going to be easy for the, for the Biafra, but they should keep their faith and they should believe and they should unite and they should come together. I'm telling you, nothing is impossible when they agree, when they come together. And Igbo people, I believe I stay with Igbo people, Igbo man will come and make his business, that's all. He doesn't want anybody to play with his business, which is very, very good. The reason why many business is suffering is because you, you, are, you open a business and your brother will come and be doing anyhow. But I like the way Igbo man do. Even his brother, when you want, he wants something, you have to buy it. If he wants to help his brother, he will help his brother. That's the way he live his life and which is good. Thank you. Conversation. Just uh, yesterday, the federal high court presided over by Justice Evelyn Nayadike ordered the federal government to restore Namdi Kanu to what it described as his status quo uh, before June the 19th, 2021. And in that ruling on fundamental human rights and extraordinary rendition of the leader of the prescribed IPOP group, she also ordered the government to pay 500 million naira as damages to him. I need you to help us understand because over time there have been different cases here and there. Some will recall January. Uh, the case of the High Court in Abia State. I think it was one billion naira. Then, then October the 13th again at the Appeal Court, he was. Uh, I mean, he was acquitted uh, according to uh, what we saw. And now this one. Help us understand. How is this related, or maybe not, to others? How do we situate this latest one? This makes sense out of the entire process. Uh, in January, as rightly mentioned, there, there was a, a civil case. Uh, against the unlawful invasion of Nam the father's home in Omaha in 2017. And the Jimako who initiated the process also brought in the issue of extraordinary rendition uh, that took place in Kenya. Now, the court in Omaha, in summary, uh, declined jurisdiction with the issue of extradition rendition saying it's clearly, clearly outside the jurisdiction. By the way, extraordinary rendition for people who are not, I mean, extraordinary. Oh, of course, what does it the mean? way he was abducted, the abduction is okay. called extraordinary okay, rendition. He was that. abducted not in accordance with the process. If you have any citizen you want to take out of a country, you go through ex extradition process. It's a judicial process. You don't just go and pick a human being. Uh, and then bring that person to another country. Remember Omari Diko's incident in Britain also. Mm -hmm. So it was that extradition, you know, a process that this young man brought a case against that it wasn't done properly. And then also the invasion of 2017. Mm -hmm. The court now assumed jurisdiction over the invasion, the unlawful <coughs> invasion of 2017. Remember that Namde ran away when he was pursued by the military not by any court order. They just invaded his father's home. So that was clearly unlawful. So he brought these two cases together in the state high court. The court declined jurisdiction on the order. Extradition. Beautiful. And said that it can assume jurisdiction on this other one that has to do with our local issues and for which state high court has jurisdiction and then awarded the damage of one billion. That was in January. That was in January. And now yesterday's. Then, the Ejimako himself, who happens to be the counsel who brought this matter, felt that the right thing now to do is to bring this extradition uh, process, I mean the extraordinary rendition matter, before the Federal High Court has jurisdiction. Mm. So that was the one that was decided yesterday. 
The court now said one, that it was very wrongful, contrary to local laws and international treaties for the federal government to have taken them the forcefully from Kenya and brought him back to Nigeria in order for him to face his treasonable charges. So for doing that, uh, she awarded one, 500 B million against the federal government. So that is with regard to, these are civil cases. The one in Abuja is criminal. Namde is charged for treasonable uh, offenses and uh, before the Federal High Court in Abuja, 15 count charge. The legal team brought an application to dismiss all the charges for being incompetent. The court said that only eight of them were incompetent, struck down eight, and allowed seven to stand so that Namde can face trial for the seven charges. They went on appeal over the seven count charge that the court allowed. And the court of appeal now says, for bringing Namdi in a manner that was clearly a violation of his right, any other charge that stands on that issue of bringing is, doesn't, can no hold, that the court has no jurisdiction to try him. In other words, all the seven count charge that was remaining was also knocked out. Okay. Meaning there is no charge, as I speak to you today, before any court anywhere against him. But that is criminal now. That's at the Court of Appeal, okay. Abuja, yes. But then the federal government said he's discharged, discharged but not acquitted. Or now, acquitted, <laughs> not discharged. Which one of well, which you one know, it's, it's a matter of semantics. If, that, if you, read, you need to read the judgment of that court, of the Court of Appeal, even when beyond issue of discharge and acquittal, says that there is no other court that can even try Namdi with regards to this particular offense you have brought him uh, back from Kenya. In other words, there is no charge today. If there is, when a court says you are discharged over a criminal charge, meaning there is no other charge even for you to continue the trial. So what do you mean by the issue of acquittal? Acquittal, yes, if you want to come back for another charge, fine, you can come back. That's what it means. You are not acquitted. You can be charged. But then the court even went further and said you cannot be charged brought before any other court in the land. Go and read that judgment of the Court of Appeal. So it even went beyond the issue of acquittal. You can't be brought as long as the process that brought him back has been rendered incompetent and invalid. You cannot try him today based upon the Court of Appeal, unless the Supreme Court over, overrules but uh, also the, the, the Court of Appeal. Yes, you but. also heard the federal government, the Ministry of Justice, saying yes. they can't just obey the law. They, they, mm. they court order. Yes, uh, this is one of the unfortunate things. I, I, think, I, think, I don't think it, they were rightly quoted because it would be wrong for any uh, government to say they cannot obey their own court. Of course it's they, an institution. Under democracy, you know that three you say they, government. They, you know the site, you know, security reasons. No, you can't do that. Okay. If you, if, you, if you bring a matter before the court and you have given your confidence to that court and the court now gives a judgment, it behoves on you to obey that judgment. You can go, not give any other reason other than what the court, you know, has actually ruled. Because the court considered all that. You must have brought all that before the court. And the court considered and said, look, we have violated this man's right. Go ahead and release him. So you have no right whatsoever to now cite security as a reason for you to disobey your institution. Three arms. And why we have those arms? is to ensure balance and equity in a, in a state. Now, the arm, is that, that judicial arm, is what that interprets the law. In order to ensure that there is no excesses on the part of uh, other arms of government, because power corrupts. When there is absolute power, it corrupts absolutely. So the, 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 the judiciary creates a balance in every civilized country, in every country that operates democracy, unless you're operating what you call military regime, in which case you will have no responsibility towards any person. You can do anything you want to do. But under democracy, these three arms of government act as checks and balances. So if the judiciary has made a pronouncement and said, no, this is wrong, against the executive or the legislative arm of government, you have to respect that. You have no reason for you now to give a different interpretation. It does not happen anywhere in democracy, unless you are not practicing democracy. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the Attorney General, through yes. a statement, the, uh, the Minister of Police Affairs have also spoken about that. The Attorney General saying, yes, he was discharged, but not acquitted. Yes, we've seen a rejoinder from his legal team as well. But So, one billion naira in, in January. 500 million naira yeah. now that's 1.5 billion yeah, naira billion, yes, but that's at the federal high court the appeal court has reserved you know ruling in that case because the federal government is still in court uh, regarding that and 
I mean, you've talked about the both, both sides. Federal government saying his flight risk. His lawyer saying, well, he's actually uh, releasing him essentially his, his fundamental right because That's the right. court has said that. So perhaps moving forward, because I know the National Security Council has said, well, this political what resolution, I mean, it's, at, it's in the court. The president has said he would allow the judiciary handle this. Uh, how much of a way forward do you see? Because some will say that the appeal court clearly is higher than this court that just gave uh, a judgment. So which should the federal government, or which way should the federal government go uh, for this to be resolved? Because I imagine that's the big picture for everyone. The elders, you know, both even from the South South and the South East have approached the president previously over this matter and then suggested that, look, we can find a political solution to Namdumata Saga that it was because of the mishandling in the first place you know, mm -hmm. that brought all this problem. But we can handle this matter in such a manner that there won't be any crisis anywhere. The unrest in the South is, you know, generally, the president made a promise that he will allow the court to determine the fate of Namde Kano, which is what is ongoing now. Now, that same court has made pronouncement, and the federal government is disobeying that court order. So what does it speak? It shows that you never believe that you wanted the court to resolve the issue. But I think that I have an advice for the federal government. We want peace. We cannot make progress as a nation without peace. Right. And so the best thing to do in the circumstances is to look at this issue holistically. Okay. Speak to Namdekano. Speak to the elders of what should be done in order to ensure that it's absolute peace. That if Namde is released... Mm there will be maintenance of peace in the southeast and all over generally. So I think that advice should go to the president that at this point in time, okay. he has a very good legacy to leave behind by releasing Namde Kano. But before then, there should be a discussion as to ensuring peace in the South. We have to run now. You had a similar case, the EFCC, uh, yes. that court. Has that been sorted? 12 million? 12 million they are owing me. Uh, okay. And I told them I'm, I will pursue that matter till, <laughs> till Jesus comes and I'm going to get my, my 12 million. Now they appealed against it. Well, so I just wanted to get an update. Responded, yes, okay. I, responded. I just wanted to get an update just to help people understand how yes. these things work. Perhaps yes. ongoing conversation, but we'll yes. have to thank you for that insight. Mr. Mondo Bani is a chairman of Speed Oil Joins us right here. Mondo. Thank you so much my wonderful viewers for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end like i said before if you like what you see here if you like what i do in this platform as you have finished watching this video please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications in that way you'll be able to know when i upload a new video share my videos leave your comments in the comment section constructively until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.